So we're going to talk about the moment that Romeo and Juliet meet for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you two would help me by uh, just talking about a few of the things that have happened just before. Yeah. So they meet at a big party at yes. Capulet Mansion and um, you're meant to be there. Mm -hmm. You're not meant to be there. Yeah. How have you found yourself at this party? It's all Benvolio's fault. Benvolio says, I can show you someone better than Rosaline, <laughs> but we should go to this party. And Romeo kind of doesn't want to go, but kind of, you know, <laughs> rises to the occasion and says, OK. And I suppose we should say a word about Rosaline. So he really thinks he's in love with her. Yeah. But why do we, the audience, or, or maybe Shakespeare helps us understand that he, it's maybe not love? Yeah. She, yeah. How does she feel about him? She doesn't really love him. Uh, she's not really <laughs> into him. She, she wants to live a life of chastity and wants mm. to, um, yeah, she wants to have a, a, a live a, a pure, pure life. And uh, Romeo is not down for that. No. Uh, not so, <laughs> yeah. But he hopes to go to this, this, this party and, and see her. And it's in your house? It is. Yeah, Dad's party. Dad's <laughs> legendary party. <laughs> Um, it, it's quite exciting for people. Yeah, yeah, it's funny because um, there's one scene before where you meet um, Juliet, but she doesn't say very much. Mm. Um, so in rehearsals, I'd sort of developed a little bit that she is so excited for this party to happen. But her bubble's slightly been burst, maybe just a little bit, when her, her mum comes to her room and she's getting ready before to say, you know, I think... Um, I think you should marry Paris. I think it's going to be a brilliant idea. Actually, he's he's going to come tonight to the party. Oh no! <laughs> um, and why does that feel a bit? Oh no! Do you think? I think Juliet has known that she's essentially going to be married off at some point. Maybe she didn't realise it was going to happen so young. Yeah, she's because not she's, quite yeah, 14. She's, she's thirteen. Yeah. yeah. So then you have this um, very famous scene to play. <laughs> that's in the form of a sonnet, so it's very beautiful, quite well known, beautiful language, religious language. Mm. Yeah. How, how do you both prepare to do it? What's the, what's the challenge of doing this scene where you meet? The language is difficult. I yeah. always thought it was very hard to understand but the first time we came to it. It's like a code, because in a way, yeah. There aren't that many words in it that are unfamiliar or feel like they're old fashioned. But I think I think what's difficult or what we talked about a lot is how that code works. What is they've got two lots of things have got two meanings. Mm. Yeah. So calling her a saint, on the one hand, that's she is like a saint to you in that moment. She's a sort of holy, amazing person. Yeah. But it's a very innocent word, it's a very sort of um, polite way of talking about finding someone to be very attractive. So what is he, is, is that what he's really saying or is there something else going on under that? And I think the one word that really helped that we came up with together was worship. Mm. Like, what am mm. I trying to do? I'm trying to worship you. And then after that, it all made sense. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, no, I actually understand what I'm trying to do. Because, yeah. because of the language and because yeah. of this, this ho the holiness of, of the words of saint and uh, worshipping and kind of idolising you, yes. in a sense. Yes. So you're talking about in the party scene, we've, we've staged a, a dance and people usually have some sort of sense of how, what is fun about being at the party and how you might meet. Yeah. So what's it like um, playing a scene like this between two people <laughs> in the middle of a dance floor? A little bit strange. <laughs> yeah, a little bit weird. It's not um, like it would happen in a film. And you've got to make it so intimate between the two of us, but also share it. I think it's really trusting each other and focusing and, and, and locking in and we only see each other in that moment. And if yes. we believe it, hopefully everyone else does. Yeah. Yes, um, and that is what it can feel like, isn't it? If you meet someone in that sense that everything else has just gone away. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, that pressure makes it quite a theatrical moment where they both use quite heightened language. Mm. Yeah. Um, so actually the language in this scene is not really like the language in the rest of the yeah. play. Yeah. And there's great moments of poetry in the rest of the play, but this sort of beautiful, um, very measured, kind of perfect phrases yeah. doesn't really happen anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and the way they share the lines, 
is absolutely equal. The sonnet changes both of them. Yes. Juliet's not said very much. I think she's maybe said three or four lines yes. up to this point. Um, and suddenly you, you hear her speaking this. Romeo's the opposite, where he's said a lot of like incredible, beautiful stuff and, and now has to whittle it down to, to these 14 lines. So it yes. suddenly becomes sacred. Can you give me examples of, of ways that you might, we might do this scene? One way was kind of, of um, starting with that point, like there's no one else in the room and it's, and it's, uh, it's just us two. So we're going to do a version where there's no one else there, just the two of you, uh, but you're not allowed to get too close to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that sound all right? Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Okay, let's give it a go. Cool. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim. You do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch. And palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints' lips and holy palmer's too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not, while my prayers affect. I take. Thus from my lips, by thine, my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from my lips, O trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. You kiss by the book. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Well done, you two. Was that, was that quite strange doing it like that? That was so weird. It was a little bit weird. It was a little bit... Um, it was really interesting watching it. It's very intense. Yeah, yeah so yeah, intense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you miss anything that you think's in the, in the language? The whole point for Romeo is, is, is to kiss her, yeah. really. And um, when you take the physical movement away from that, I find it's really hard to get to that point. Uh, or or, or um, maybe, um, maybe that's a good thing as well, to, to kind of get, get that out, you know, get, not have that. Yeah, because the Physical words movement. suddenly felt like they had real um, power. Yeah. But then they didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a very yeah. weird mixture. Yeah. Where do you think they touch you to mm. in the text? Um, I th think um, Pam to Pam. Yeah. It's yeah. probably the first. So this idea of, of introducing this idea of palmers as, a, as pilgrims that yeah. have been all the way to... Jerusalem to get their palm tree mm. and come back to their, um, in, in the sort of Christian world that Shakespeare would have known, they've, they've really been very serious about being pilgrim. Mm. <laughs> mm. And then Romeo does something clever with that word. Um, yeah, he says, uh, have saints not lips and holy palmers too. Yeah. He tries to redirect it from using our hands to using our lips. Yeah, great. Um, which is cheeky. <laughs> it is cheeky. Yeah. And there's something, well, we, we should explore it, shouldn't we? But there's something about the fact it's palm to palm. Mm. So they don't sort of touch each other's shoulder or yeah. something. Yeah. It's very equal, just like the language, if it's one palm to another. Yeah. Mm. And what did it feel like? Um, the other instruction we gave ourselves was to um, forget about there being any kind of audience. Yeah. What does, what does that feel like? Really serious, yeah. which I think it, it is, but yeah. uh, I think there's like more to be had in terms of yeah. the play playfulness of it. Yeah, yeah. and the kindness good. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Of, of, yeah. If you're not allowed to move, you can't give anything, can you? So you can't show that you're mm -hmm. receptive or... To what's being said. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Shall we try a version mm -hmm. where they are... Romeo and Juliet are allowed to follow the stage directions in the language. That when they talk about putting palm to palm, they do, and let's see if he gets a kiss or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let's see if we, if we remember that there is an audience in the Capulet's mansion. Yeah. Should we try it like that? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you.
If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch. And palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmer's too? Aye, pilgrim lips that they must use in prayer. Oh then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. <laughs> they pray, grant thou lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not, while my prayers affect I take. Thus from my lips, by thine, my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. What sin from my lips? <laughs> oh, trespass sweetly urged. <laughs> Give me my sin again. You kissed by the book. What is different? Felt really different to me. Yeah. Felt less sort of adult grown up. You know, it's yes. not. We'll use our words and we'll, we'll talk about this. Yeah. It's, come on, we need to act on it when, yeah. when you're young and it's exciting and, um, and open alive. to, yeah. yeah, just that pure connection with, with no fear. Yes. There's no fear. Yes. Like the barriers are down. And in some ways, although it's a very serious moment for them in their lives, mm. it suddenly didn't, it didn't feel serious at all. It felt mm. like it's a, until, until you got your kiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So until then, it felt really playful and then. I don't know about you, Bally, but look, it looked then as though Romeo was very changed by being allowed to kiss her. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think that's, it's, um, it was put like, if it was more like you, you it's, it's flirting and trying to, to, with all the, you know, all the mm. kind of bravado, like all of that kind <laughs> of like swag and everything that comes into it to then actually being changed by something that's physically happening to him yes, to yes. make him then go on this journey like because if he if this is the one thing that makes him makes them go on this epic journey together and so yes. it has to change him in quite drastically mm. for it to happen changes the course of the play, doesn't play. It? Yeah. This, that moment it's not it's not enough that they say something beautiful to each other they they she gives permission which in the context of the play is quite a big thing to do for them yeah. to touch and then yeah. to kiss.